Now we're ready to look at the quotient rule. We again are going to start out with u and v positive differentiable functions of x. We're going to look at a little change in the quotient. So we are going to take u plus delta u over v plus delta v and then subtract off the original quotient uv. So let's get a common denominator. We would need to multiply this one by v and this one by v plus delta v. And we can see that they, we then get this quotient right here. And then, then the next thing that we could do is we could simplify this. If we multiplied this, we would have uv, and here is a minus uv, so those are going to cancel. And here we would have a delta uv, and here we would have minus u delta v, and that is over the v times v plus delta v. So we could express this like this, and then we could take this little change in the quotient and we could divide both sides by delta x. So here we have divided by delta x, or think of multiply it by 1 over delta x. So here are 1 over delta x. And now we are going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0 of this, and so we know that this is in fact the derivative of the quotient u over v. So as we look at that, we know that the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits. We also have a product here. The v does not depend on delta v, so we could move that out in front of a limit. We have a difference here, so we could take the difference of the limits. And so when we do that, this is what we end up with. Now let's look at this. This here is Leibniz definition. This is just du dx, and this one is just dv dx. This one, as delta x goes to 0, delta v also goes to 0, and we're left with a v times another v. So here we have v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared when we compute the limit and that is our quotient rule. When I compute the derivative of a quotient, I say this in my head, and I actually just call it the bottom and the top for the functions. We've got the numerator and denominator, so I say bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared, and that's just how I can remember the quotient rule. Some people like to say low d high, which means take the low function, the bottom function, and then the derivative of the high function, the numerator, minus high d low all over low squared. So it doesn't matter which way you remember it, but bottom line we need to remember the quotient rule. So when we have the derivative of a quotient, we can compute it. Let's go ahead and apply this then to a quotient. So this derivative is bottom times the derivative of the top, and the derivative of this polynomial here is a power rule. Power out in front decrease the power by 1. Here we have 3 times the derivative of x. The derivative of x is 1, so this is going to be plus 3, and the derivative of 4 is 0. So this was bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top we need to in parentheses because we want to multiply the whole thing, times the derivative of the bottom. This is just a power rule, and the derivative of a constant is 0, all over the bottom squared. So there's the quotient rule. Now, we typically will want to see if we can simplify the numerator, so I'm going to multiply this out. So I have 2x to the third minus 2x plus 3x squared minus 3 minus 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 8x, and this is all over x squared minus 1 squared. So combining like terms, actually it looks like my x cubed terms cancel, and I have negative 3x squared. Combining my x terms, I have minus 10x and then minus Three, and this is all over x squared minus 1 squared. Now there's not a reason to multiply out the denominator, but we should look at the numerator to see if we factored this, if something might simplify. So I can see I can factor out a negative, and then the rest of that, now all of these terms would be positive, and it looks like I could do 3x 
an x and a 3 and a 1 here. So the numerator will factor, but since there is not a common factor with the denominator, I could leave it factored or I could leave it like this.